Okay, let's take a reading from <laughs> Wilson <laughs> Blackett's uh, fascinating book, The Trojan War of 650 BC. And we're still in the introduction at the beginning. Three, chapter one. And we talk about the ages in chaos, which is about the dating problems facing uh, the conventional chronologies and how there's just this absolute refusal to even discuss or acknowledge that there are real problems with the dating. Uh, it's bizarre. So anyway, we'll pick it up on page 14. The problems caused by Greek mathematical calculations. Hundreds of books and dozens of films and television documentaries written in the 20th century all confidently proclaim that the Trojan War took place around 1200 BC. None of these publications ever attempt to demonstrate any proof whatsoever which might in any way validate this strange dating. None of these publications ever offer any corroborative evidence of this dating for the Trojan War from any other contemporary ancient history. Yet the archaeologists proceed with this even more dubious chronology of around 1200 BC as if it were proven and unchallengeable fact. Nothing could be further from the truth. When the Roman poet Publicus Virgilus Marco, known as Virgil, wrote his great epic poem The Aeneid in the reign of Augustus, it was instantly recognised that Virgil was placing the time of the Trojan War around 650 BC in direct contradiction to the Greek calculations which placed the date around 1200 BC. The hero of the epic, the Prince Aeneas of Troy, was the father figure of the foundation of Rome, and Rome's history stemmed from the arrival of Aeneas into Italy and his building and foundation of the city on the legendary site of the villages and huts of Romulus and Remus. Aeneas was in fact contemporary with Evander, who arrived near the Tiber shortly before Aeneas, and no one who does any research dates Evander as early as 1200 BC. Aeneas was to Rome what George Washington was to the United States of America. With Virgil working from extant Roman records and directly confronting the Greek dating with a 550 years different date, there was an obvious collision. There was no great debate and no scholarly examination, and the matter was generally, generally resolved in favour of the Greeks by virtue of the immense prestige which the Lyceum of Athens enjoyed. This university institution had been founded around 400 BC, and it was considered unthinkable that the Greek scholars of Athens could be so wrong. Institutional reputation won the day, brackets as it still does, close brackets. And Virgil was considered to be a poet who got all the history wrong. The obvious fact that if Virgil was wrong, then all Roman history, which is based upon the arrival of Aeneas from Troy around 650 BC, was also hopelessly wrong, was somehow ignored. Augustus, the nephew of Julius Caesar, and even Julius Caesar's pedigree and ancestral descent, and that of Marcus Antonius Brutus, was being declared to be wrong. In fact, all Roman history back to Aeneas of Troy was wrong. So what was it that the Greeks were propounding and which was being blindly supported as correct? Well, numbers of Greek mathematicians had made calculations which purported to establish the dating of the Trojan War. We can list some of these quite bizarre mathematics estimates. So the mathematician followed by their estimated date of the Trojan War. So Duris, 1334 BC, Herodotus, 1250 BC, Parian Chronicle, 1209 to 1208 BC, Timaeus, 1194 BC, Eratosthenes, 1183 BC, Sosibus, 1171 BC, Ephorus, 1106 BC, so, from 1334 to 1136 is a spread of 198 to 199 years, and these discrepancies, which show that there is no idea better than somewhere within 200 years or thereabout, should have caused alarm and concern somewhere. When these Greek calculations are examined, they do in fact present a frightening scenario of ineptitude and muddle. 
Herodotus, in Book 8, of which we only have medieval copies of some 2,000 years after Herodotus lived, stated that Theopompus, the king of Sparta, was eight generations before Leotychidus, who fought at Mysala in 479 BC. This information was then misused in a remarkable way, and the Cambridge Ancient History of 1924 carried a note of what was done. It was, in inverted commas, calculated that each generation of Spartan kings lasted 30 years, and so 8 times 30 equals 240 years. This 240 years was added to 479 BC, itself a dubious dating, to produce a date of circa 719 BC for King Theopompus. It seems that Solon of Athens, not himself a Spartan, was believed to have stated that 30 was the normal age for marriage in Athens. How long Solon's Athenians' laws lasted is again uncertain, and how accurate this statement is, and how on earth it can be applied to Spartan royal history is a total mystery. Yet this is precisely the manner of dating, mixing and juggling that went on. There's nothing at all wrong in attempting sensible calculations to get a preliminary rough idea of no recorded and confused history. As will be several times demonstrated, however, the history of the Trojan War is very well recorded and easily dated from numerous sources. Surely, however, a rough average of 20 years at most is more accurate for the reigns of any kings in any dynasty of any ancient nation, including Sparta. This is precisely what emerges from any study of the better-known histories. What appears to have been happening, if a more acceptable and realistic 20 years basis is used, so we get 8 times 20 equals 160, is that Theopompus of Sparta was busy conquering the collapsing power of the Achaean house of Atreus in Greece around 639 BC. So the calculation is 479 plus 160 equals 639 BC, some 20 years after the Trojan War, sorry, and the house of the Atreidae had withdrawn into Egypt once again. Several Greek poets wrote that the Trojan War overstrained and ruined Greece. It would appear to be hazardous to accept any average length of reigns of any dynasty in violent periods of history, as the phenomenally high 30 years per king. Yet Eratosthenes produced a scheme which listed the names of all the Spartan kings that he could find, and then he calculated on an average reign of 39 years for each king. Yet analysis of well-recorded, long-enduring dynasties makes a figure of 20 to 22 years a good yardstick for average length of reigns, and not the absurd 39 years used by Eratosthenes. This expedition into the realms of total absurdity then brought the calculation back to around 850 BC, and Sir Eratosthenes simply added on a further 350 to 400 years without any good reason stated. What it all means is that this most quoted calculation to establish the date of the Trojan War is a ludicrous guess. In fact, Spartan kings reigned in pairs. The Spartan state was ruled by two kings, one from each of the royal houses, assisted by five archons, and one king had always remained at home in times of war. This introduces a further exercise in the bazaar into these strange calculations. The method used by Hellenesus of Lesbos to make his estimations again employed an average reign of 39 years for each successive king, a phenomenal average duration which staggers the imagination. Thucydides calculated by placing the Trojan War at 80 years before the Dorian invasion. Brilliant. But no one knows the date of the Dorian invasion. Thucydides then calculated the Trojan War at 16 generations before Xerxes. And we have no idea what he meant by a generation. Neither do we know which Xerxes he was referring to. Persia was ruled by Xerxes I from 486 to 465 BC and by Xerxes II from 424 to 404 BC. Does a generation mean reaching manhood at 18, 
Or is it 20 years, 21 years, or 30, or 39, or what? Just how accurate is the statement of 16 generations? And how is this estimated, justified, or reached? In support of this flims, flimsy assemblage of guesswork by, quote, classical, close quotes, Greek mathematicians, a second and even more bizarre modern academic theory has arisen. This holds that after the end of the Trojan War, of sometime around 1200 BC, a strange, dark age fell upon the whole of Greece and all its states. And this same dark age overspread the whole of Asia Minor, with all its advanced, developed and powerful kingdoms and their huge populations. During this quite incredible and indeed totally impossible dark age of 500 to 600 years duration, everything everywhere in the whole of Greece and Asia Minor fell into total oblivion. No one lived or died there. No one built anything or destroyed anything. No one left any relics, any grave goods, any broken pottery or other remains. There were no memorials or inscriptions, and no one wrote anything. And all was total barbarism and illiteracy. All civilization itself vanished and was completely lost. Remarkably, it occurs to none of the proponents of this absurdity that it is then equally claimed that the poetry of Homer detailing the Trojan War is supposed to have somehow survived this astonished Rip Van Winkle era of five to six hundred years of oblivion and chaos. Instead of pursuing these inane and ridiculous calculations in an exercise in complete futility, it is far better to seek out the masses of positive, tangible evidence which lies around in abundance all over the ancient Near and Middle East, which proves that the Trojan War took place around 650 BC. Not only did Virgil write his Aeneid and boldly place the events surrounding the withdrawal of the Prince Aeneas from the stricken city of Troy around 650 BC, but another ancient writer was even more forthright. The Jewish historian Flavius Josephus, again with access to all the vast ancient libraries of the Roman world of the first century AD, openly ridiculed the Greek claim that the Trojan War took place around 1200 BC. Flavius Josephus, writing around 80 AD, stated plainly that the Trojan War took place around 1000 years after the time of Moses. Actually, this was a slight exaggeration, as Moses clearly dates around 1400 to 1350 BC, and the Trojan War of circa 660 to 650 BC was only 750 years after Moses. Actually, Flavius Josephus was estimating Moses at around 1750 BC, and so his thousand years estimate is not far out. What it all amounts to is that whilst it is utterly futile to seek for evidence of the Trojan War in the annals of the ancient nations around 1200 BC, it is extremely rewarding to seek for confirmatory, confirmatory information around 650 BC. The blind poet Melisigenes, Homer, Homer equals blind man, allegedly lived around 700 to 630 BC. And this means that he was composing his epic, the Iliad, contemporaneously. All the speculation, speculative huffing and puffing, attempting to redate Homer back to around 850 BC, and other strenuous theorising attempts to place the road Trojan War around 900 to 850 BC, is misleading and wasted effort. That the Trojan War was real and actually took place, was regarded as a certainty by ancient writers, and the non-Greek element of ancient historians knew when it took place, and had no motive to aggrandise and stretch out Greek history into earlier, unreal areas. The constant summary is that if the Greeks' mathematical guesstimates were anywhere near correct, and the Trojan War took place around 1200 BC, then British ancient history, Frankish ancient history, Roman ancient history, Hebrew-Jewish ancient history, Chaldean-Hittite ancient history, 
on other records, including even corrected Egyptian ancient history, are all totally wrong. In a takeaway of-